Greetings Internet, it's Dustin again with my home kit home and in this video we're hopping over to the Mac and checking out the home app with Mac OS Mojave. Now bringing the home app to the Mac platform is part of a larger project called Project Marzipan which aims to make it easier for iOS developers to bring their apps to the Mac platform. So what we'll be doing in today's video is taking a look at some of the similarities, some of the differences, some of the good things, some of the bad things, and some of the, well, just plain weird things that we encountered along the way with the home app on Mac OS Mojave. Then I'll kind of give you some of my thoughts and my general impressions on it and how I actually use it in my day-to-day -day life. So that's all for the intro. Let's get into the video. And here we are in the home app on macOS Mojave. And as you can see, it looks pretty similar. You know, of course, we have the name of our home at the top left, and we have our status area there. And we can see that we have our scenes and our accessories as well. One of the main differences that we'll notice right off the bat here is that our tabs are now along the top. That includes home, rooms, and automations instead of being at the bottom as they are in iOS. If we go over to our status area and we click on that, we'll bring up all of the different accessories that we've decided to add to our status area as well as any sort of notifications that we have popping up. In this case, it's the fact that none of my home hubs are responding, so I might want to look into that and see what's going on there. As you can see, by simply clicking on either a scene or accessory, we can trigger it, including its power state, which is a pretty useful and pretty intuitive feature, I would say. You know, one of the big differences with Home on Mac OS is the home icon at the top left. So in iOS, when we click on that, we go to our home settings, but here in Mac OS, it brings us to a list of rooms. If we tap on the plus button at the top right, you'll notice that it doesn't actually bring us to a screen where we can add an accessory because we can't actually add accessories using the home app on Mac OS, but we can add scenes and we can also add automations from this option as well. One of the pretty convenient features, let's say, of the home app on macOS is that we can use shortcuts and key commands to switch between the different rooms. So we can use command one, two, and three to switch between the home rooms and automations tabs. Or alternatively, we can swipe left and right with one or two fingers to switch between the different rooms. Now it can be a little difficult as you can see through our little screencast here that you know switching between the rooms for me was a little bit difficult but after you get used to it it should be fairly simple there. Um, so one of the interesting things about home on the Mac is how we get into the settings for our actual accessories. So one of the things that we do is of course we can click once on an accessory to toggle its state and turn it on and off but sometimes we want to get into the more granular controls so what we have to do is use a secondary click whatever one you have set up if it's tapping on the right and that brings us two options we can go into the show controls which will give us the controls of the accessory so if this is a light then you have a brightness which we can adjust there. We can also go into the temperature or the color depending on the type of accessory that it is, humidity, all of those sort of controls there. However, if we want to get into the accessories settings, right, if we want to maybe change some of the notifications, we have to do our secondary click, but we have to choose the second option for the settings, which I think is a little bit strange. Um, and so we can see here that if we tap on, or click on rather, the settings, it brings us in and we can adjust the name of course, we can change which room it's in, we can, since this is a smart plug here, we can also adjust the type of accessory that it is. Um, we 
you know, the only thing that's different here is that we don't actually have access to the um, to the manufacturer's app because there really isn't one. Um, I guess it would be nice maybe if it uh, sent us over to you know, an iPhone or an iPad, but that doesn't come along with this version anyway. We can also add and excuse me, we can also remove the accessory there, um, which is the same across you know, Mac OS and iOS. You know, and so there's not really much to say here. You know, I, I don't particularly care for the way that we get into the accessories settings, but all of the information, all of the things that we would want to change are there, and we can do that if we so desire. Um, so, you know, nothing too outrageously different there, inconvenient, except for how we actually get into the controls and the settings. It seems like it would be a little bit better if we had the same way that we get into that from iOS. We also have all of our automations. These are exactly the same. We can make edits to them if we want. We can create new automations. Everything here is pretty much the same as well. I do believe in the first version in 12.1, we weren't able to do people-based automations, but we can get into that now. So as I go back and forth here from my rooms and home tabs, earlier we mentioned that the home icon at the top left doesn't actually bring us to the home settings, but rather a list of rooms. But if we want to get to the home settings, we'll go to the menu bar, we'll click on edit, and then home settings. And here we have all of the exact same settings that we would have normally. We can look at people, we can see if there are any software updates for any of our speakers, we can modify our notifications in terms of the sensors and different things. You know, we have all of the exact same, you know, settings that we would have in iOS, but it's now here on a Mac OS. We can change, of course, also the background images here. That brings up a really interesting point. So if we kind of look around here, the menu bar, kind of if we go into the settings for the home or even for the room for that matter, it doesn't actually give us an option for adding custom images. So what we have to do is fairly simple we have to drag and drop. So if we look here in our room, we can see that we don't really have anything that will allow us to do that. So what we need to do is go find a picture. So what I'm going to do is we'll go to our kitchen, since I've already kind of set this up. Um, so we'll go to the kitchen here. We click on that and let's go get our image from our desktop. So we'll slide on over there. We'll grab our image and we'll simply drag it onto the room and there you go. We have updated the background image for our kitchen. Well, there you have it. That is the home app on macOS Mojave. So we can see that we have a lot of the same functionality as we do on our iOS devices, with the exception of a few different little key points there. I'll be completely honest with you, I don't really use the Home app on my Mac, whether it's my iMac or my MacBook Pro, I just don't use it. I do use the Home app for one pretty clear thing, and this is across both my, my MacBook and my iMac back there, and that's for notifications. I use it to make sure that whenever there's motion in a certain place, if I'm, for example, if I'm in my studio, which is the back of the house, I wanna know if something's going on in the front of the house. Also, I've got a motion sensor in Bruno's area where he does his business and it lets me know whenever I need to go play cleanup crew. And no matter what I'm doing, I'll always have that notification, whether it's on my phone, my iPad, my MacBook Pro, or my iMac back here. So how can we make the home app on macOS better? My first real recommendation would be to remove the double click. It doesn't really make any sense to me. Since we do have long presses and, and double presses, instead of having the two options, why don't we just have the one option like we do on iOS? 
and we long press or we do our secondary click and we can get into the controls of the device but then we can also go down to the bottom and select our settings and go into the accessory settings from there also i'd like to see some improvements to the navigability of the home settings it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me that it only lives in the menu bar at the top but that's something that can be easily fixed with an update so do you use the home app on one of your mac machines let us know in the comments down below also in the description box down below you'll find links to all of our social media as well as the blog over at myhomekithome.com if you found the video useful give us a big thumbs up if you would if you haven't done so already hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of our videos whenever they're released well that about wraps it up for me today until next time this has been dustin with my home kit home